So if you're like me and have a bunch of these wise smart devices throughout your house, you'll know that your options for putting the video streams in Home Assistant are limited. There is the community built integration, which doesn't allow you to see the video streams, but you can control things like locks and switches and see some data from some of your wise sensors. You can also use the tiny cam Android application to act as a server running on either an Android phone or a Raspberry Pi, but that gets out of hand after a couple of cameras, plus it consumes a lot of your bandwidth. And finally, there's the official way, which is using the RTSP firmware. However, recently WISE has decided to pull that from their website, and so that's no longer a viable option. It's an application that will convert most WISE camera streams into common streaming formats and allow you to integrate them into whatever application you would like. So today on this Smart House, we're gonna take a look at the WISE Docker Bridge and how to set it up in your Home Assistant environment. All right, so before we get started, let's talk about what this project actually does. Now, this is a Docker container that will run inside of Home Assistant that allows you to pull the video stream either from the local network or from the cloud and convert it into RTSP or other various uh, stream types. Now, don't worry, uh, this project is super easy to set up on Home Assistant. The developer has done a fantastic job. Big shout out to the developer. MRLT8, them and their team have done a great job setting this entire project up. I've kind of watched it go from infancy to now this fully developed project that is extremely simple to set up and very powerful. It used to be you had to run this on an independent Docker container like, like another Raspberry Pi or Linux server. Now you can just run it directly on your Home Assistant instance. So like I said before, you can actually redirect the stream straight from the camera to your server bypassing having to go through their cloud server, which is, makes things very fast and it lightens the load on your network. Now, of course, the cameras still need to be connected to the internet because they will not function without internet connectivity, but you can save your bandwidth by redirecting the stream internally. And if that doesn't work, it'll actually go out to the cloud and pull down the stream. And you have an option in the configuration to set whether you want to stay land mode or cloud mode or take either one. Now, this project is fast developing, and so there are a few features that I've just discovered on the latest release that I didn't have available on the version I was currently running, but I'll talk about those here in a second. Now, let's talk about what's necessary for this project. Now, all you really need is to be running the supervised version of Home Assistant. Not to worry, if you're running the version that's installed on the Raspberry Pi, it's most likely the supervised version. The quickest and easiest way to tell if you're running the supervised version is to see if you have an add-ons tab in your settings. If you don't, that means you're probably not running the supervised version, which means you can't run add-ons and you can't install Docker containers on it. Now, not to worry if you're in this situation, you can actually install this project on any Docker instance on any machine. And what you'll do is basically have it run as the server and then you just pull the streams from it. If you actually look at the instructions under Quick Start, that is to run it under Docker. So if you happen to be running into that problem, you can use the Docker instance. If not, just follow along with the instructions. The Home Assistant version is very easy to install. So that's the only requirement. You used to have to install Hacks, the Home Assistant Community Store, but that's no longer required. They actually have it in the community add-ins now. Now, like I said before, installing this is a snap. All we have to do is head out to the project page, which I've got down in the description, or you can go to the short URL here below. That'll take you to the main page of the repo. Now, if we scroll down here and we click on where it says basic usage and then go down to Home Assistant, it'll quickly take us to the nice blue add to my repository button for Home Assistant. Now, I also have a quick link to that in the description below. If you haven't used these buttons before, there's a super convenient way to install a plugin, an add-on, whatever you find on the web. It'll actually redirect you to your local instance and then allow you to install it. Now, I'm gonna set this all up in my test environment. So all I've gotta do is click on the add to my repository. And if this is the first time you are doing this, you'll be prompted with this little screen where you have a picture of the Home Assistant blue. This is where you'll enter your Home Assistant URL. You can use a local URL if you don't have cloud access to it because all this is gonna do is just redirect your browser there. So then when you click open link, it's going to ask you to log on if you haven't already logged in this browser session. And then it's gonna take you to adding the repository. So in this case, all we gotta do is click add. It's gonna add that repository in and then refresh the page. And then if we scroll down here, we have, we'll see the Docker Wise Bridge appear as a possible add-on. So we'll click that and then we need to click install. Now this may take a few minutes because this is a relatively large add-on Docker container and you probably need to be running a modern version of Home Assistant. It doesn't need to be the latest one. This is actually the February release because this is my test environment, but it should work on any version of Home Assistant uh, that's within the last year or so, we'll call it. Of course, with every one of these, we have access to 
a few settings. You can set this to automatically start on boot. You can set the watchdog, which will automatically start the add-on if it crashes. If you want to, you can set auto update. I don't really recommend doing that because if there's a breaking change, you want to know about that before you take your environment down. And if you want to have the web UI show up on your taskbar on the left here, you can click this and it will add it to the left side of the bar. So before we click start, we have to actually configure the plugin. So we'll go to the configuration tab here and we're gonna to need to enter our username and password. Now this is just the standard username and password for your Wise account. If you do have two-factor enabled, you'll need to go review a special note that they have on how to set up the two-factor. So again, if we go back to the main page, basic usage, there's a section here under two-factor MFA. And this will explain to you how to set up two-factor on there. My account doesn't have two-factor turned on because I play with too many of these plugins, but all you're basically doing is setting up an authenticator on the Docker container and having it generate the code for you automatically. Um, if you do run into problems with this, let me know in the Discord or on the comments and I'll be happy to walk you through it. It's pretty easy. But we'll go back to the plugin and we'll enter our email address and password. Then below that, we have allowed net modes, which again, this is what I talked about before, LAN, P2P or any. Uh, this allows you to set it to where you only want LAN traffic or you only want cloud traffic or both. Um, you can change the snapshot mode. You can enable audio for all cameras if you want to. This is where you set your Home Assistant auto discovery topic. If you read under the notes for the Home Assistant section of the integration, it says it can do MQTT discovery. So it can actually expose some sensors and camera images on MQTT, but it sounds like it only works for older firmwares. This isn't working on any of mine. So if you have an older firmware and it happens to work for you, it exposes like motion sensing, let me know in the comments below. If you do run into problems with motion sensing, you can use another third party application like Blue Iris or Motion to actually do the image analysis to get you the motion tracking. If you want to do, if you want to have those sensors exposed, I can go over that in another video. Then at the bottom, you can obviously customize the ports um, or what's available. Now, one of the cool things that they've added in a recent update is a web UI. Before, you just had to kind of put together the URLs to get the camera images. Now they have a nice exposed web UI that'll show you every single camera that's been detected. It's very cool. So we'll go ahead and click save here and go back to the info tab and click start. Now, again, don't forget to use the log area if you run into any issues. So it will tell you all the cameras it's gonna discover. It's going to tell you if it runs into any problems, if it fails back onto the PDP mode, that sort of thing. So definitely view the log files if you run into any problems. But if we go back to the info tab, we now have an open web UI link here. If we click that, it's gonna show us the web interface I talked about. Now I've got two cameras that are offline right now. These are actually my battery powered outdoor cameras and those are now supported. Those were not supported in an earlier version. He's got a great little matrix on the project page that shows you all of the cameras that are currently supported. So if you go back to the main page and you scroll down, you'll see the list of supported cameras right here. This pretty much supports every wise camera out on the market with the exception of the doorbell pro. So as of currently, it supports wise cameras version one through three, the floodlight camera, the pan versions one and two, the outdoors versions one and two, and the original doorbell, which funny enough, I actually have in a box back here, both the floodlight and the doorbell, which I'll be installing in the next month. So I'm super excited to be able to actually pull those live streams directly into my home assistant instance, which is gonna be really neat. So again, if we pop back into here, we'll see all of the cameras that are available. So you'll see that was it. Now I can see all of my cameras. Some of these do have the RTSP firmware on them. Some of them don't, it doesn't matter. You don't need the RTSP firmware. It's gonna pull it from the camera regardless. Because you remember the version two pan camera does not have an RTSP firmware. And that's what this is right here. This image right here is actually coming from that version two camera. So pretty cool. And you'll notice this only refreshes periodically oh, up at the top here. You can set the refresh interval. So you can set how many columns you have and the refresh interval. So if you wanted this to refresh every 15 seconds, you could set it to 15, that sort of thing. You also have the option to control the bridge from here. You can reset the connections to cameras. You can reset the simple server, which is what's actually serving out the RTSP streams or the entire server. So now we actually have our camera streams pulled in a home assistant, we can see them in here. But now the question is, how do you get them into the actual home assistant UI? And that's super easy. All you need to do is underneath each of these camera images, you'll have a link to the particular stream type of your choice. You can either do an HLS, you can do an RTMP or an RTSP. RTSP is one of the most common ones. So you can click on that and it will actually send you to the link. Or if you want to just right click and say, copy link location. So now that we have the RTSP link, for each camera, 
So now that we have the actual URL of our camera, you could put this into VLC to test it. You can put it into say motion or blue iris, any sort of camera software you want, you can actually grab that stream and stick it in. Um, if you look here on screen, I've got the kind of the breakdown of the URL. It's RTSP, then the IP address of your home assistant instance, colon 8554 slash the name of the camera. So adding the camera to your dashboard is super simple. All we have to do is be running a later version of home assistant. Anything past 2022.07 should be fine. We need to have access to the generic camera entity integration in home assistant. So to add a generic camera, we just go into our integrations, click add integration and look for generic camera. So for the stream source, all we have to do is pop back into the web UI. We will grab the RTSP right here. So in this case, I'm going to right click on this and say copy link location and we'll paste that in here. Then for the still image, we need to make a quick tweak. Now, by default, whenever the way the bridge works is when the bridge loads the first time, it's going to grab a snapshot from each camera. If you want that snapshot updated periodically, we need to make a quick change to the config. So we click on the back arrow here, go to configuration, and then under snapshot mode, we want to set this to RTSP. So what this is going to do, instead of loading that image the first time and then no longer ever doing it again, it's going to continuously load it every 180 seconds. Now, this is actually going to load an image into your home assistant instance and allow you to have access to it. So there's a very fast and easy way of getting to it via a direct link. Now, I can't do that because I'm showing you how to do it with my test environment. But if you look in the home assistant section, he explains right here where that URL is to grab it off the local home assistant instance. You can also grab it directly out of the web UI, which is what I'm going to do in this case. And then if we flip back to the, to the basic usage section down below under the very top here, there are some URLs. If we want to grab an image directly from the camera stream, all we have to do is copy this URL here and we can paste it into our still image URL. If you're running the, the Docker bridge on a, on a different device than your home assistant instance you're setting this camera up on, you'll need to replace the local host with the IP address of the actual location of the WISE bridge. And then it's colon 5000 slash IMG slash camera nickname. And so to get the camera nickname, it's just what we took from the RTSP stream JPEG. So as long as you're following this format, it should work. You can copy this and you can paste it into your browser. And there we go. We're getting a good still image. It's a good way to test it to make sure. So as long as you follow that format, you should be good to go. Now, I'm not using the authentication because we don't have that. And the frame rate down here, I've only got set for two hertz. So it's only going to get two frames per second. But that's more than enough for me just to check on a camera. If you need it to be higher than this, you can set it to something like 10 hertz. But just remember that adds more workload on your server and on your Docker container. So we'll click submit and there we go, create a configuration. Now it's gonna give it a goofy name of the IP address, but if we click on it here and click on the entity, we can actually go to the camera and see if it's working. Now, if, you run, if you're like me and you have issues where it takes a while to load the stream, you can tick this box down here and that will preload the camera stream in the background so it doesn't take as long to load. So there you go, now I've got a live stream coming from my basement WISE camera. You can see even the WISE logo down here at the bottom. Now, if you wanna change the name of this, we can click on the entry here and just call this basement cam. You can even change the entity ID here and that'll update the entity ID. And then all we need to do is go into our cameras here, click on the three dots, edit dashboard, and then add a card. And if you want to, the easy way to do this is just to click on buy entity and you can just type in camera.basement. It'll automatically suggest a card for you. So you can do that to click add to dashboard. And there we go. Now I have the cameras in there. So there we go. Now we've got our streams set up in Home Assistant. You could actually use this if you're using Motion or TensorFlow or anything else. You can take the RTSP stream and stick it in any other application you want to do analysis, motion detection, recording, whatever you want. Now you have a little bit more freedom than you did before with your WISE cameras. Thank you again to the developer MRLT8. Did an excellent job on this project and obviously the rest of the community that's supporting them. Now, if you'd like to see how to integrate your other WISE devices in Home Assistant, you can check out this video right here. I show you how to set up another add-on to bring in things like light switches and locks into your Home Assistant instance. Also, if you're just getting started with Home Assistant, I've got a great playlist here with showing you how to set up a bunch of different add-ons for Home Assistant. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo right here. Thank you again. I'll see you in the next video.